From Upper Michigan Source, this is your Sports On Demand for Tuesday, December 19th. I'm Mike Ludlum. A number of basketball teams are starting to wrap up their schedules before the calendar reaches Christmas. On the girls' side last night, it was Gladstone visiting Westwood. First quarter action, Maddie Kosky, Liz Farley, baseline drive, hoop, foul. She missed the free throw. The game was tied at 7. For the Braves, Taylor Zeiss, Megan Crow, Andy Ballinger from the outside. Two, three, four, five, six. Lost count of that, but it did go in, and that's what matters. Say hello to Jared Kosky and Blake Froling of ESPN-UP calling the game. Off the Caitlin Hardwick miss, we're going to call it a great bounce pass for Maddie Algren, and that was a couple seconds before the buzzer, and the Braves had an 11-8 lead. Red, white, and blue get going in the second quarter. Kosky to Tessa Lease for three from the outside. And Westwood dominated the rest of the way, winning 53-28. to On the scoreboard, Houghton's pair of sixes defeated Lotz's pair of fives. Kara Piedla had 22 for the Gremlins. Barragas in the win column, downing Lakeland and Hubble 36-23. Chancel 52, Antonagan 36. Jeffers seven better than or nine better than Bessemer 47-38. Battle of the Border Battle went to Ironwood 42-30 over Hurley. Forest Park 46, Superior Central 32. Julianne Wickman had 20 for North Dickinson, getting past Big Bay to knock 56-43. Carney Nato, a bucket better than Norway 38-36. Bark River Harris 56, Mid Peninsula 39. Munising had four players in double figures in the easy win over Stevenson. And, or Newberry, I should say. And Stevenson edged Angadine 49-46, despite 23 points and 14 rebounds from Angadine's Aubrey Simmons. Rudyard defeated Marquette 41-34, and Sault Ste. Marie won the Battle of Blue Devils 44-35 over Gaylord. To the boys, Marquette finally plays a game in the Upper Peninsula after four games below the Mackinac Bridge in Escanaba last night. Marius Grazulis, Trey McFerrin, 4-2, Marquette leads 10-1. McFerrin at 21 points, seven rebounds, six assists, three steals, and two blocks. I'd say he had a pretty good night. So did Ethan Martish. He had four triples, 16-3 Marquette with the lead. Now es uh, Escanaba gets to work. Garrett LaMarche, the jumper from Craig Kameen. But Marquette led 20-12 after one. And yes, ugly Christmas sweater contest, I think, in the band section. Second quarter, Ryan Robinette gets going. He scored 11 straight points, ended up with 24. Marquette's lead was down to six. But Marius Grazulis was tough inside, 19 points and 13 rebounds. And Marquette was your winner, 76 to 53. On the boys' numbers, North Central over Menominee, 57-35. Marcus Johnson poured in 35 as Iron Mountain defeated Gladstone, 71-66. Oh, by the way, Reese Castor at 44 for the Braves. It was Jason Waterman knocking down 33 for Nagani in the 62-45 win at Gwynn. Taylor Tucker at 31 for the Model Towners. Matt Ogula, 32 points for Calumet. Copper King, 71, Barriga, 30. Chassel and Dollar Bay will play another day. Cedarville 89, Detour 42. Pelston Stings, St. Agnes 64 43. Brimley over Mackinac City 89 53. And on the Wisconsin side, it was Oneida 55, Niagara 37. Also in college, college basketball, the Minnesota Duluth women defeated NMU 76-55. Emma Benoit had 12 for NMU. Marquette's Therese Leedy had nine. On the men's side, four players in double figures led by Isaiah Johnson's 18. However, the Bulldogs had 32 and 13 rebounds from Brandon Meyer, and the Bulldogs won 87-82. Michigan Tech had absolutely no fun against Monona State, falling 98-66. Kyle Monroe had 35 points and 7 rebounds for the Huskies. And in high school hockey, it was Houghton getting a game-winning goal from Dawson McKay, defeating Calumet by the score of 3-2. Bay College has hired Heidi Sharon as the first women's softball coach in the program's history. Sharon played four years on the varsity team at Escanaba in 2001 through 04, helping her 2003 team to a second place finish in the state. Before that, she was on Gladstone Little League All-Star teams that went to the World Series tournament two years in a row in 2001 and 2, and played on multiple travel teams and state 
regional tournaments. Following graduation, she played one year at Michigan State, and she says it's time to get softball and baseball rolling. To be a small town, rural area, competing at the national, on the national stage in every, every age group right now in softball is amazing. Um, and it's just all the greater to have this now for girls to go to after high school, after when their talent's peaking, you know, we'll just keep it going. There's already girls that have expressed interest, and so we're just excited to start there talking with them. Sharon says a home field has not been selected, but there are several options available. She worked with the Eskimos in 2009 through 12 and was head coach at Lansing Eastern in 2007. She currently works at Bay in the Academic Support Department as the Retention Program Manager.